what on earth am I doing hiding in the bushes? That's a very good question. Well, like most of us, unfortunately, I'm working from home this week and probably will be for the foreseeable future. So my back garden is probably the only place that I have to get away from the rigours of what's going on at the minute and uh, kind of have a bit of downtime. And the garden's an amazing place to be able to do that, to actually engage with wildlife and just to chill out a little bit. So I thought I'd go on a little uh, back garden safari and I thought you might as well come with me. So at this time of year, our gardens are changing. There's lots of changes that we can see. Some are very obvious, some are quite subtle. But as we move from winter into spring, you can see some of those changes that are happening. And I thought we'd point some of those out as we go around the garden. Uh, I'm quite fortunate. I've got you know a decent sized garden. It's quite long, disappears into the, to the back there in the gloom. And um, that's great for me, but it doesn't matter if you don't have a back garden. Not everyone is fortunate enough to have a back garden. Some people might, might live in flats and all they have is a window box. That doesn't matter. You can still engage with wildlife if you have just a small amount of green space. That can be literally a window box you can get. And insects that visit, you might put up a little feeder, you get birds that visit. But in, that, in those flats, if you look across at the cityscape, you can see all sorts of things happening. You might see the edge of a park or look across a woodland. You can see lots of things. So even if you don't have a back garden, you can still engage with wildlife out of your bedroom window. But I'm just gonna take you on a little wander through my back garden and we'll see some of those changes that we can see and I'll point some of those things out hopefully. So I said that we're moving out of winter and we're now into spring, looking at the weather today. Look at the blue sky, it's glorious. It looks like we should be in uh, the Mediterranean, but no, we're not. But this feeder, so this feeder um, has been really popular this year. I've had um, all sorts of things on here. Great tits, blue tits, cold tits, the usual, uh, but also uh, had a great spotted woodpecker. We've had um, loads of goldfinches. A few greenfinches, not many unfortunately, greenfinches have really suffered with um, the disease that they've been struggling with, but we've had a few. Uh, also robins, even dunnocks on here, not the sort of birds that you'd normally get on the feeders, but yeah, really, really popular. But this particular seed feeder, I would normally have to fill up every couple of days, whereas I haven't had to feed, uh, fill this one up for probably, um, ooh, I don't know, almost a week now. So you can see that the birds really don't need that food that they did in the winter. Similarly with this peanut dome. Sometimes we had ooh, about maybe f four, five even blue tits fighting on here in one go, but I haven't had to fill this one up either for about a week. So you can tell that the birds are, either have uh, another source of food that they're now able to get, or possibly more likely that those birds now that were flocked together in your garden in the winter are now dispersing as they look to set up territories and start to breed. So they're dispersed from your garden. I mean, we're still getting a few blue tits on here, but not many, and it's been really noticeable, the lack of birds on these feeders compared to maybe even just a month ago. So that's a really obvious change that we have uh, noted recently. Behind me, you can probably see we've got um, a nest box here on the, the tree in the middle of the lawn. Now this nest box was um, has been really successful so far. I've had other nest boxes where, you know, you put it up, put it up on a tree, you get very excited, right, I'm gonna have birds nesting, and then you kind of, you don't get anything, and you think, well, it's, it's a good nest box, it's weather proof, it's watertight, it's facing the right direction so it's not getting the sun on it uh, throughout the day so any chicks aren't getting warmed up so it's, it's perfect and, and for whatever reason it just doesn't uh, prove popular. And that might be because there's lots of other nest holes in the surrounding area, um, who knows? But sometimes they're just not popular. This one, um, we've had this one up for about four years and we've had birds in it um, every year apart from one. So we put it up for blue tits, but actually the first year we got sparrows, which was quite exciting. I've never had sparrows nesting before. Quite a, a rare species, unfortunately, for a lot of people in their back gardens. But yeah, we had sparrows in the first year. Second year we had great tits. Then we had uh, we didn't have anything in the third year. And then we had blue tits last year. And this year we've already got blue tits that are prospecting. So they're going in and out of the nest box. I have to be careful with this tree. I'll do myself a mischief. So they've already been going out in and out um, of this uh, nest box. They've been sitting on the branches singing, they've been popping in and out, the pair of uh, blue tits have been going in and out every, uh, well, probably every half an hour or so, just making sure that um, all the other birds know this is our nest box, um, you know, leave it alone. And they don't want to go too far away from it in case any other bird or any other species maybe takes over that nest box. So they've definitely got their eye on it. They've already started taking a few bits uh, uh, of twigs, feathers, moss into the nest box. 
nothing too much at the minute so they're just basically uh, they've acquired it it's theirs they're not going anywhere leave our nest box alone so I don't want to stay too long here otherwise I'll have uh, blue tits bobbing up and down giving me grief but it's exciting so hopefully we're gonna have blue tits this year so before I go this, this is a, a false acacia which is um, look at the thorns on that not exactly what you would call a native tree but um, yeah really huge huge thorns I tell you I've bashed my head into there cutting the grass quite a few times and the language is appalling but anyway um, enough of, oh there was a brimstone a brimstone butterfly just shot across um, I can't chase it I'll look like a lunatic and I won't be able to catch up with it but yeah uh, yellow butterfly one of the first butterflies to see in your uh, back garden in the spring so quite exciting hopefully we might see another one in a, in a minute before we move on from the um, acacia just thought I'd look at the um, look at this look at the um, can you see that all of the the lichen on this branch this tree is absolutely covered in lichen quite amazing for whatever reason it really likes this tree and um, yeah the branches from a distance almost look yellow there's so much lovely tree very um, quite unique in that much this tree is quite late to have any leaves on it and then they last quite a long time into the autumn and very bright yellow but um, yeah it'll be a while yet before we see these leaves that's not the case for lots of other trees and lots of the um, species that are nesting, these blue tits, how do they know when to actually start nesting and when to look for nest holes and that sort of thing? And they're looking for all sorts of things. They will uh, judge it on things like day length, so they know, it's not, they don't know the clocks are uh, about to go forward, but they know that there's more sunlight around and therefore they, they judge it on day length. But they'll also look for certain visual cues. So things like this tree over here, you can see, can you see here? So these buds, uh, these leaves are coming out, and that's, what's, that, that, that's what I said when the, the blue tits will look for a sort of visual cue. So they, they, they're hopping around, land on a branch, they can see that the buds are coming out, and then they know that actually the seasons are changing. So they will use this, they will actually, they're not just guessing, they're actually looking for these different aspects, so that's a big change. Lots of flowers out at the minute, obviously, because it's spring. We know that spring flowers are very much part of uh, the garden. I want to show you my favourites. Um, I just love them. We've also got a honeybee down here. That's, well, I've just disturbed the honeybee, but there's plenty of these. So these are grape hyacinths. And um, yeah, I just, I just love them. I think they're very cute. The bees at the minute, as I said, lots of honeybees around. The bees absolutely love them. And um, yeah, I just think they're, they're beautiful, very delicate, lovely colours. I'm just getting a honeybee in the ear here. He's, uh, they're having a great time, look. I'm not sure if you can see that. But, um, but yeah, very popular. Lovely colour in the garden. And um, yeah, one of my favourites. But lots of flowers at the minute. Even, it's coming over here, even the, uh, even the rosemary's flowering. This was in the front garden. We kind of pulled it up, put it in a pot, see what would happen. Got this big rosemary now. And lovely flowers. So you can tell everything that's happening has changes. Flowers probably being the most obvious thing. But also the insects. I said earlier there was a, a brimstone butterfly flying around. We'll try and pick some butterflies. I, I can't promise anything because they're so damn quick. Um, and I said I'll, I'll look like a lunatic running around after them. I probably won't be able to catch up with them unfortunately. But brimstones, um, I saw a tortoise show as well this morning and I think I just saw a comma. It was very quick but I'm 99% sure it was a it was a comma and um, so you'll start to see more species of butterfly uh, around now but look out for the yellow ones for the brimstones because they're often one of the first ones that you'll see in your garden I said about the honeybees also lots of bumblebees around at the minute big bumblebees the one bashed into my head the other day I wonder what was going on but they're all uh, buzzing around and that's quite exciting so that's another, another sort of visual sign that things are changing in the garden uh, and changing in the season so picking up on those things so this is kind of um, a bit of the garden that we sort of uh, manage for flowers, which is quite nice. But then we get towards the end of the garden here, um, and it's this is kind of the wildlife area. And um, I kind of leave this, and it's great, because it, um, there's nothing here apart from nettles, and it gets very overgrown. And uh, I just kind of leave it to do whatever it wants, really. It's a bit of a kind of, it doesn't look particularly nice, but um, you know, a bit of a compost heap. A bit of a mess to be honest, but that doesn't matter because wildlife doesn't like well manicured gardens. It likes things that are a bit of a mess and likes things that are a bit kind of scruffy and um, 
lots of options for it then. So I've come into a very grand um, summer house. I say very grand. I hardly ever sit in, in this summer house. In fact, this is probably the first time in a year I've sat in this summer house, so please don't get the wrong idea. It was the, the people that owned this house before that uh, had this. But um, it's quite nice, it's quite uh, relaxing when the sun's out as it is tonight today. We've got blue sky all around. So it's quite nice to sit here and um, yeah, just take it all in really. You can sit in your garden and just, um, and just watch and listen. And um, you know, a lot I've said about sort of mindfulness, but actually to look at what's happening in your garden. What are you seeing for the first time uh, this year? Uh, what are you seeing more of? What are you seeing less of? So for example, this morning I saw a song thrush on the lawn. Well, I haven't seen a song thrush really all winter, and a lot of the time with song thrushes, they will disperse during the winter. They they use a lot of uh, farmland, a lot of farmland. They like really like wet ditches around farmland in the winter as a as a habitat and a resource. So actually, in the winter, I haven't seen any. But first time for for months saw a uh, song thrush on the lawn. So that was a sign that things were changing. Also saw um, two pairs of robins, both of them sort of feeding each other. So it was an adult feeding another adult. And this is generally the male feeding the female, nuptial feeding they call it, and it's basically part of courtship that the male is uh, trying to, you know, uh, create that pair bond with a, a female and basically convince him that he's a good thing and he's going to be very good at providing food if they were to nest. So that's another sign. If you see, it's, it, robins are a really good example because you'll see them sat on your fences, an adult feeding another adult. And that's when you know that actually the breeding season is starting to kick off. So that's another sign that you can think of. Where we are here at the minute, um, as I said, it's quite sort of dingy around here. You don't want to just sit in my summer house all the time, do you? That seems like I'm, you're just watching telly. Let's go and see some, some actual garden. But this, this area, as I said, is a bit kind of a bit overgrown. This is where we have had um, muntjac deer coming into the garden. And um, it's quite exciting. I know muntjac deer, people that manage Woodland in particular don't particularly like deer because they do a lot of damage to, to new trees. But it was quite exciting to see muntjac deer actually coming into the garden. And they've been coming quite regularly. And just a couple of days ago, there was a muntjac deer and then there was a tiny little fawn with it. Really, really tiny, probably only just born in the last couple of days. And um, yeah, it was just lovely to see because it's kind of, it's not the sort of thing that you see in your garden very often to see quite a, okay, they're not huge, but a reasonably sized mammal in your garden with young already. So again, that's another sign that things are changing to see animals that have obviously been breeding, that they're having the young. They're not going to have the young really in the middle of winter when it's cold, but they will have the young uh, so that they're coming out when the sun is coming out and when the seasons are changing, when there's going to be move, more food around. I say more food around, they have demolished the new tulips. Let me show you this if I can, probably if I can find any because they've eaten them all. This is a new, this is a new tulip. You see that, where is it? This thing here. That, that was a tulip. Hmm. Now as a conservationist, I should be happy, you know. I'm helping to feed the wildlife, helping to feed the deer. As a gardener, some people might be like, my tulips. But anyway, there's plenty of other tulips, so that doesn't matter. But, um, but where are these deer coming from? Well, actually, this, um, this back garden backs onto other back gardens. So rather than backing onto a house, we're backing onto other back gardens. And therefore, there's a whole line of back gardens which go all the way along and behind me here. So there's a whole corridor. So if I was to be a bird flying over, uh, so for example, yesterday afternoon we had a, a red kite fly over, which was fantastic, really exciting for us. I remember the first time I saw a red kite, it was in Wales when, uh, when I was about 15, and that was when red kites were really endangered. Uh, less than 100 birds in the whole of the country, all in a tiny little pocket in Wales. And um, I was on a geography field trip and everyone thought I was completely mad. They were kind of saying, you know, I screamed. I was on the bus and saw the red kite and I screamed and I said, stop the bus, stop the bus. I think they thought I was going to be sick. So I went running down the aisle of the bus and um, jumped off the bus. They were all expecting me to be sick. And then I ran out the back and saw this red kite and I was running around going, oh, I've seen a red kite. Thought I was a lunatic. Um, 
Anyway, that was the first time I saw one. But now they're, they're very common. I went for a dog walk recently, saw about a dozen of them. So very, very good um, at, uh, you know, they're feeding on carrion, but they're very, they're generalists. And actually, given half a chance, they will recover those populations. And they've done really well uh, across this part of the uh, country. Anyway, this is like a Ronnie Corbett joke. I digress. Um, red kite, we had a red kite flying over and um, that bird will have seen all of these gardens and what that bird will have seen was this huge green corridor going through the village where we live and that corridor is so important because over that way there's areas of farmland and woodland whereas over that way there's more farmland and woodland but you have a big quite a sizable village in the middle so how does the wildlife get from over that side to over this side. It uses this corridor and these back gardens so that the deer that we have in the back garden will probably be coming from the woodland over there and maybe heading to the woodland over there. But these back gardens are such a resource. They're so important in terms of maintaining um, biodiversity. So really, really fundamentally important. Um, and also I suppose we talk about kind of culturally you know it'd be awful if we didn't have things like i don't know hedgehogs in our back garden we're quite lucky here that we do have hedgehogs um haven't seen any yet and that will be another sign another change that we'll be looking for we'll be looking to see are there any hedgehog droppings do we actually see hedgehogs when are they coming out they should be coming out of hibernation any day soon some of you may have already seen hedgehogs but that will be a change that we'll be looking for but wouldn't it be awful if we didn't have hedgehogs in our back garden if we didn't have pollinators that would be equally awful and it would be a real challenge you know we need those pollinator species they're so important in terms of um, you know people talk about importance to the economy it is it's important to pollinating our food crops a lot of our food crops so it would be awful if we didn't have pollinator species and therefore back gardens are really important to provide a resource and a home and food sources for those pollinator species but also health and well-being we're talking about health and well-being you know a lot we've been talking about it for quite a long time but also with everything that's going on not just in the UK but across the globe right now back gardens are an amazing resource for your health and well-being just to sit and enjoy so today you know I've just been wandering around with you um, looking at a few things and, um, and just listening just listen to what's going on we've got all sorts of things we've got a robin singing over here we've got another robin singing over there we had a wren singing over there a minute ago. I can hear blue tits. I can see blue tits on the nut feeder, just the one. But, um, you know, you can sit down and um, just engage with wildlife. Just sit, you can literally just, as I am here, sit on your lawn. Listen what's going on. There's a little alarm call going on over there. So it could be a magpie, it could be a cat that's disturbing those birds over there. But you can just see what's around you and start to kind of take it all in. But look out for those changes. What's changed in your garden? What's different? What didn't you see a couple of weeks ago that you're seeing now? We're about to be joined by a dog. That's, that, that's going to be a massive change in the last that kind of 15 minutes. Um, but that, that aside, enjoy your garden, enjoy wildlife, and really engage with your garden and see what's happening. Because it's, you know, it's fun. And it takes your mind off other things. I was going to say hello to the dog, but the dog's got scared. He doesn't want to be on live TV. It's not live. It's not live. As I said, we're going to be doing other videos uh, as part of the Essex Wildlife Trust, and I'm going to be going on dog walks as well, so you can see the dogs at another time because we're going to be looking at wildlife as we go on a dog walk. Another thing that we can do. So look out for these videos that Essex Wildlife Trust will be bringing you. Go and check out our website. It's uh, essexwt.org.uk. You can see lots of things about how to engage with wildlife. You can see lots of other uh, videos and um, get inspired. This is a, a difficult time. It's a challenging time for us all and it's very uncertain. But what you can do is relax, unwind, either individually or with your family and engage with wildlife and, uh, and really enjoy it. So I hope this has inspired you to get out and get in your garden and look for some of those changes. But stay safe. Enjoy your garden, keep watching wildlife and check out, as I said, Essex Wildlife Trust's website for other ideas and I'll see you very soon for more videos and more safaris.